Hi, my name is Emily and I'm a freshman from California. I am with Interns for Good and I made this curriculum. This is punctuation, a virtual curriculum made for grades three and up. A basic lesson summary, students will gain understanding of commonly used punctuation. Some skills acquired, students will learn when and how to use a period, exclamation point, question mark, comma, semicolon, apostrophe, and quotation marks. We're gonna start off with a period, and a period is what you put at the end of a sentence. For example, at the end of the sentence, I like to play in the sand, we put a period to signify that this is the end of the sentence and this is what this sentence is about. Another example, my brown dog has a bone, same thing, that sentence ends with a period. Next, we have an exclamation point, and we use an exclamation point at the end of only certain sentences. We use an exclamation point at the end of sentences that have strong emotion, like anger or joy. For example, watch out. When you're saying watch out, or when someone yells watch out, they don't say it calmly, they yell it full of emotion to alert a person. So you wouldn't say, watch out, you'd say, watch out. So that's, that's an example of when we would use an exclamation point at the end of the sentence. Another example, there's a spider on my leg. Um, if there's a spider crawling on your leg, I don't know if you would, but I would be freaking out. So I wouldn't be so, like, calmly saying, there's a spider on my leg, I would yell, there's a spider on my leg. And that's an another example of a sentence that has a lot of emotion to it. And that's why we add an exclamation point at the end of it. The last one is, she stole all my money. Let's say you're getting robbed and I don't know about you, but if I was getting robbed, I'd be angry and sad and surprised. So I wouldn't, softly say she stole my money i yell out full of emotion she stole all my money and that is why we put an exclamation at the end of that sentence just a reminder an exclamation point can take the place of a period we usually put a period at the end of most sentences but certain cases like the sentences and these examples that are full of emotion we would replace the period with an exclamation point. Next one is a question mark. A question mark also goes at the end of certain sentences. We use question marks at the end of questions. Some examples of questions, who ate all the cupcakes, or what is your name, or where is the bathroom? So in certain sentences like these, we would put a question mark at the end of them. Next one is a comma. A comma is used to separate adjectives and nouns when you are listing them in a sentence. And we also use a comma to connect two independent clauses or one independent and one dependent clause together in a sentence. That's a lot of information. So why don't we look at some examples? So the first example is, I went to the market and bought eggs, comma, milk, comma, cheese, comma, and ice cream. This is the example where you use commas to separate the nouns in the sentence. So this sentence, I'm telling you what I went and bought from the market. And because eggs, milk, cheese, and ice cream are four different items, I use commas to separate these items. The second one is, Adam is a smart, comma, happy boy. This is an example of using comma to separate adjectives in a sentence. Remember, smart and happy is adjectives that describe Adam. So we would use a comma to separate smart and happy in the sentence, Adam is a smart, happy boy. The last one is, unless you are going, comma, I won't go. This is an example of using a comma to separate an independent clause and a dependent clause. So the dependent clause in this sentence is unless you are going. And we use a comma to separate that from the independent clause in this sentence, which is I won't go. 
The next one is a semicolon, and a semicolon is used when joining two complete sentences that are about similar topics. For example, we have two sentences here. The cow is brown and it is also big. Those are our two sentences. Because they're talking about the same thing, a cow, we can use a semicolon to combine those two sentences. So a combined sentence would be the cow is brown, semicolon, it is also big. The next one is an apostrophe. And an apostrophe is used to show ownership of something. And we also use an apostrophe when writing contractions. Remember, contractions are um, words that are pushed together to make one word, like the words we and will can be contracted to make will, will, or are and not can be contracted to make aren't. Uh, Apostrophe looks a lot like a comma, but remember a comma goes at the bottom of the sentence and the apostrophe goes at the top. Here's an example. That is Sally's bike. Notice that in this sentence, we're trying to show that the bike belongs to Sally. And instead of writing the bike belongs to Sally, in that long sentence, we can abbreviate it and write that is Sally, apostrophes, bike. Another example is Mr. Smith's dog likes peanut butter. Again, the dog of Mr. Smith, instead of writing that out, we can put Mr. Smith apostrophe S dog likes peanut butter. And the last one is I'll call my friend and tell her we aren't going to the park. This is an example of using an apostrophe when writing contractions. So in this sentence, we have two contractions, I'll, which is the contraction of I will and aren't, the contraction of are not. The last one is quotation marks. Quotation marks are used to show that someone is talking. We also use quotation marks to show that the part in quotation were copied from another source. For example, Today, Herbert said, I hope I get a good grade on the test. The parts that are in quotation marks shows the part that Herbert said, which is, I hope I get a good grade on the test. The other example is, according to Wikipedia, pandas are going extinct. The quotation marks in this sentence, pandas are going extinct, are used to show that the sentence pandas are going extinct was used from another source. Another person or another website has said this and I was just quoting them. Now it's your turn. Take some time to pause this lesson and go through each of these worksheets and practice using commas, quotation marks, periods, and everything that you learned in this curriculum. Here are some more resources that I thought would be helpful. There's some games and some more worksheets if you want to learn more about punctuation. Here's some more sources that I use to make this curriculum. And that's it. Thanks for watching.